Our first song tonight is There's Within My Heart a Melody. <clears throat> Let's pray. Our Father and our God in heaven, hallowed be thy great and loving name. Thank you, Father, for the day that you have given to us and for blessing us with another day that we were able to be on your creation, able to get up and out and be doing. Thank you, Father, for the health and safety that we have, that we've been able to do what we've been doing today. Thank you, Father, for watching over us and blessing us in so many ways, for the food we had to eat today for a time to rest and fellowship with each other this evening. 
Thank you for the beautiful weather we've had and for a comfortable, cool building to meet in. Thank you, Lord, for the congregation here at Liberty, and the friends and family that we have, have together that we can expect to see and visit with. And we pray that you would bless us, Lord, that we might grow closer to each other uh, with every time we meet and that we might get together more often, that we might better understand each other and what we each other need and how we can be a help to each other, that we might grow closer together as your church, that we might grow more effective in serving you. Thank you, Lord, for time to spend in your word. Thank you, Lord, that we have such ready access to your word and that we're able to spend time in it every day. Thank you, Lord, for those who spend such time studying and preparing lessons and sharing them with us and their abilities to do that. We pray that you would guide them and bless them in the decisions they make of what to study and what to talk to us about. We pray that the lesson this evening would be something that we need to hear, that we'd be reminded of some things that will help us to better serve you the, the rest of this week, and that uh, much good might come from the time we spend in your word together this evening, that we might be better prepared for the things that we'll face. We thank you, Lord, for all that we've been given, for health and safety, and we pray for your blessings on those we know of who are sick and hurting, those who are going through... Uh, chronic illnesses, those dealing with cancer, those recovering from surgeries. Help us, Father, to keep our eyes and ears open for opportunities to serve, to show your love to those that we're around, to our, to our brethren especially, but to anyone in our community that we know and we can have, a, have an effect on. Help us, Father, to live so that the light of your Son shines through our lives and that others will glorify you through the... the uh, time they are able to spend with us and they might see your son living in us. Thank you, Father, for all that we've been given. Thank you most of all for the promises you've made to us. Thank you, Father, for the sacrifice that's been made for us. Thank you for Jesus Christ, for all that he did for us, his teaching and his example, especially his going to the cross to die for us that we might be saved. Thank you, Father, for your love. Help us to remember how blessed we are and how much has been done for us. Help us, Lord, to remember this life is temporary, and it is short and it is quick. And help us, Father, to be striving every day to, to strive to be more like your Son, to be a better servant of yours, to live our lives in faithful accordance with your will. We love you and we thank you. Thank you for Jesus Christ. It is in his holy name that we pray. Amen. Before we begin tonight, does anyone need a copy of the lesson? Anyone need a copy? If you need one and don't want to tell me right now, you can get one up. Um, but um, we are starting a new study. I said, you know, this summer I got to sit back and listen to others, and now it's, it's time to get back to, on Wednesday night to teaching again. And um, I appreciate, you know, teaching in the class and the comments we have, the discussion we have. And I hope in this series of studies, several people mentioned to me, said, let's study this. And so we will for a while. Um, the fruit of the Spirit is what we're going to talk about. And we're going to lay the groundwork for it tonight, just kind of do an introduction to it. And then we'll get into what is the fruit of the Spirit and, uh, and, and talk a little bit more about that. But back this past spring in our yard, um, we have different, we, we plant a lot of things in planters because we have that prairie soil type clay. And so we have, you know, any flowers that we want, we either dig out and put dirt in or we put them in po big pots. And we had one of these half barrel types, type pots that had a, a hydrangea in it. And it had been doing good. Well, springtime came when things started sprouting and evidently that hydrangea didn't make it through the winter. It just was very sickly looking anyway. But then looked and there was a vine that came up and realized the leaves didn't look like your normal weed. And after it grew a while, realized it was a gourd vine and then after we watched it for a while, and of course I talked to, to Bernard about it because he had given us different types of gourds and stuff. It turned out it was one of these loofah sponge gourd vines. I mean, you know, they grows little sponge type things. And we finally figured out, you know, we didn't plant it on purpose. It was an accidental planting. We had had some of those sponges that uh, Bernard had given us and we peeled them and some of the leftover stuff we had thrown out in the woods and evidently we threw some dirt in on top of it that we repurposed and that, that seed got planted and so it came out it grew a vine from like me to jimmy here long and we thought well this is great it bloomed from here to jimmy blooms everywhere 
thought, this is wonderful. It's going to be nice. We have a bunch of them. We'll run it down the fence line, blah, 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 blah. Well, one of them started growing, and it got up about that big. And then I noticed all the other blooms. We went out there every day and said, something is eating the blooms off. And finally I realized it wasn't. They were just, the blooms got big, they fell off. And then that one that grew, it fell off. I mean, it just, we had nothing. You know, we had all that hope, that anticipation. It looked wonderful. The vine stayed pretty. Finally, I got mad at it, and I said, you're not worth anything. I chopped it down and threw it in the fire, just like, like Jesus talked about. And I, fig I figured I had scripture for throwing it in the fire. But um, and then Bernard finally told me, I think you have to have a, a male and a female as far as the plants are concerned to cross-pollinate, or two, at least two plants to cross-pollinate. And I realized another plant had come, over, come up in the tree line. If I had known that, I could have put them side by side. Anyway, you, you learn after the fact and left with two plants and nothing to show for it. That can be aggravating. I mean, when, when you, because that, that was in the back of the yard. I had to walk down there and make sure it stayed watered and everything. And I thought that was just a waste of time. And, you know, we look at us as Christians. We're supposed to be sowing and reaping. You know, we're, there's things that we're supposed to sow. There's fruit that we're supposed to produce. And I wonder, you know, how God looks down on us sometimes. And does he get a little frustrated with us or aggravated at us? You know, if we're not really um, producing the fruit that we're supposed to um, produce. And we can look at that in a number of different ways. I and mean, we can talk about producing fruit as far as winning others to Christ. We can talk about the fruit of our lips as we praise God and pray to him. Uh, but also there's this idea of bearing the fruit of the spirit. And that's what we, we're going to be looking at. On page one of the outline I gave you, the second paragraph, it says, in this series of study, we will be looking at the emphasis placed upon the kind of fruit that is produced in the life of one who is allowing the Spirit of God to lead or guide his life. It is important to notice that in Galatians 5, 19 through 26, that the apostle draws an obvious contrast between those who follow the desires of the flesh or the teachings of the Spirit. Both bring forth fruit. In this first lesson, we'll look at the emphasis on the need to bear good fruit. I mean, whether we like it or not, we're all bearing fruit. Some say, you know, I'm not interested in that. Well, guess what? You're bearing bad fruit. I mean, you know, we, we're either bearing the fruit that God wants us to or we're bearing the fruit Satan wants us to. You know, which are we doing? But we're going to talk tonight about, begin talking about bearing the fruit of the Spirit. And I will throw this out just for, for thought. Um, I, was looking, I was looking up material for this and looking up different things to share and it's amazing how many times you see it says the fruits of the Spirit. And um, I, I, Sydney was talking to me beforehand. It's fruit of the Spirit. I think there's a difference there. And that is that when you talk about the Spirit, the fruit that the Spirit um, produces within us and bear, bears within us, it is described in different ways. I mean, you can talk about love and what, all these other different descriptions of it. But we don't pick and choose, like you say, oh, I want an apple tonight, an orange tomorrow night, or whatever. You don't pick and choose which fruit. It's a descri the description we see in Galatians really describes the fruit that's within our life, or should be within our life as a Christian. But let's go over to Galatians chapter 5, and we'll begin there. And then um, anytime you have a comment, question, whatever else, um, feel free to speak up. Uh, Galatians 5, beginning in verse 19. It's going to contrast the works of the flesh. And I mean, when you look at the works of the flesh, it describes society, really, when you look at the world. Now, the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. Let's stop there for a moment. You know, we look at some of these, and some of these are probably bigger sins on our list than others would be. I mean, we say, oh, that's, that's, that's more serious than this one is. But really, I mean, sin is sin. And whether it's a matter of jealousy or whether it's a matter of sorcery, they're both sinful. Selfish ambition or envy, Murder and drunkenness, they're both sinful. And he, he lists these, and in case we go, oh, I hadn't done that, hadn't done that, hadn't done that. And he says, and the like, and the like. He said, I'm, this is not an all-inclusive list. But he said, you understand where I'm going with this. Things like this that you could describe in these ways. They said, I've told you beforehand 
Just as I also told you in time past that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. He said if these things, any of these things or things like them describe your way of life, I mean, it doesn't mean that at times we might get a little jealous. I mean, and, and, you know, and that's, but, it, but if, if that's our manner of life, if that's, if that's the path we've chosen to walk in and choose to walk in in our life, he said, you won't inherit the kingdom of God if you practice those things. And so we look at the world. What's the world doing? They're not just practicing it. They're, they're, they call evil good and good evil. Um, they take great pride in causing others to do the same thing. You know, every time I think um, our, our, you know, the world can't stoop any lower, it stoops even lower. And um, you look at how they're trying to poison the mind of our children in the school system or if you go to a public library and... Um, some of the books our children can check out. You get online, and they can see anything and everything um, there as well. And and then on some of these social media sites, they you start looking up stuff. They'll block things that are good that you need to see, and they'll only show things that that are not. Good. I mean, they'll they'll bring up the worst of things, and, and it has a certain political correct slant to it. But he said that you know don't practice those things. The world is, but don't you? Any comments on that part? You know, we've talked about that quite a bit. Go ahead. I was just going to say, if you go through that list, mm -hmm. the number one thing sends people to almost all of those sins. It's sex. Sex and, I can't think of other words, but anyway, it's your, you quit forward. Right. I mean, yeah, the, the um, you know, it uses the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, or the avenues of, of temptation. And, and to some, you know, to many of us, like you say, it's given into those fleshly desires that, um, that are there. And again, there's a proper place for those and, and proper attitude with that. But um, you look at the world, it's like anything goes with anyone, anytime, any place, whatever. I mean, you know, just don't worry about morals. Um, and when you start talking about right and wrong, people get all bent out of shape on it. Unless you step on their toes, then you're wrong. <laughs> but like... In fact, on one of the ones where they did that, I think it's at a, a, some kind of school here, and um, they shut the man down saying, that's, you can't be saying that in here. And they say, well, that's what, that's what our kids are reading in, in school, so why can't I say it here? Uh, and, and so you do see that. And, um, um, but my point is yeah. that the evil people are trying to develop those things that we... Right. Yeah, I mean... Well, what do you, what are your, what are you, what desires are you feeding in your life? And um, I was reading, um, now for, I was starting to say, and it's, it's, it's gone. Um, I was reading, oh, um, somebody made a comment about, um, you know, like these drag queens that are reading to elementary kids, and they say, you know, what's wrong with a, you know, what's wrong with a child having a drag queen read to them? And, you know, you know, why are you saying that a child shouldn't want that to happen? And they said, that's not the question. The question is, why would an adult want to do that to a child? You know, why would a person want to be a drag queen and then read to a child? That's the question. Why are you insisting on reading to that child and being there with those children? That's the question. And it goes back to the wrong desires you're talking about there. That's the work of the flesh. And we see it every day, and it's out in the open. The things that, uh, you know, that people should be ashamed of, they're speaking in, in open. Where's the place where it says they have forgotten how to blush? You know, um, they're not ashamed of it. They're they're proud of it. But he said that you expect that in the world. But he says not as a Christian. He says that's the fruit. That's the works of the flesh. 
But the fruit of the Spirit that's supposed to be in our life is something far different. It is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, you're talking about giving in those urges. Now, here's self-control. Against such, there is no law. I mean, it's, but that's good and right. Those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. A lot of people claim to be Christians, but they're not walking in the Spirit. A lot of people claim to be good people, but they're giving into the works of the flesh, not living with the fruit of the Spirit showing in their life. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. I mean, he kind of ties that in as well. You know, what kind of attitude, what kind of heart do we have? And we're going to focus our attention over the next few weeks looking at the fruit of the Spirit. How, how do you describe the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You know, does that describe your life or my life? I, I can look at some of those, and I'm much better in, in some of those characteristics than others. But on the ones that I'm lacking in, I need to be working on those. And the ones you're lacking in, you need to be working on those. The fruit of the Spirit. Um, we talked about Sunday, Caleb having a different spirit. And, um, you know, we, we can use that in a negative way. That Boy, that person's different. But with Caleb, is a good thing. I mean, he had a different spirit. We're a peculiar people. We should have a different spirit. And here's a part of that. People should look in our lives and see that love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. The fruit of the Spirit. Before we get into the main part of the lesson, that's what that lays the groundwork. Any comments or thoughts? I was trying to think, it's, that is in here somewhere, and it's on our question and answer, and I, I was trying to see how far over. Um, it's on page three. Um, we, how does the Spirit produce fruit in us? So we will get to that point. So that's, you're, you're right. We need to know, if, if it's important to have it, we better know how, it, how that, that goes about. How yeah, how do you access it? How do you get the um, We were, was looking up something, Rachel was looking up something for her class online, and it, she saw this wonderful little craft on there, and she goes, Mark, figure out, see me figure out how to get this thing printed. And I figured out, we finally figured out after a half hour trying to get it printed that the link was no longer good on where, it, it, it told you how to do it. But as far as the link for, the, uh, for the, the thing you print off to make the craft, it was gone and it was not there. And I said, it's no longer in existence or at least you can't get to it anymore the best I can. And I tried looking for it which way you could. Um, what good does it do you if you can't get it? You know, um, and, in this, in this, um, and I did find a workaround on that later. But, but you know, if you can't get to something, um, that's bad. And when it comes to the fruit of the Spirit, the Bible tells us about it and how to get it. But let's look at the fact that, you know, when it comes to this idea of producing fruit, the sowing and reaping is really behind that as well. Um, everyone is sowing seed. Um, most of us realize the principle that states what you sow, you'll reap. But um, the question is asked there, what you... Uh, well, the Bible says, what you sow, you'll reap. What does the apostle state are the two things to which we can sow and what is reaped? Before I turn to Galatians 6, 7, and 8, what are the two things that we can sow to and what do we reap? We can sow to what? The flesh or the spirit. And what's the result of that? Life, eternal life, or there's... there's um, there's, there's um, corruption or damnation. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. You know, there, we can make fun of people sometimes when they get deceived. Now, sometimes it's, it's sad when you see it, but sometimes when somebody's bragging and all of a sudden, you know, well, look, watch me, look what I'm doing, and then they fail miserably. <laughs> uh, you, you might sit back and say, shouldn't have been bragging, you know, but God's not mocked. And he said, don't let anyone trick you. The world will trick you. Whatever you sow... You're going to reap. You know, you may pray for a crop failure, but it doesn't work that way. Um, he who sows to the flesh, we talked about those works of the flesh, will of the flesh <coughs> reap corruption. He who sows to the Spirit, will of the Spirit reap 
everlasting life. So, you know, that's a principle that's there. That's an abiding principle. Don't try to trick yourself and say, oh, you know, I, you know, I, I can sow my wild oats or I can, I can practice this in my life or that in my life and we think we can get away with it or that um, it really doesn't matter or we're the exception to the rule. You know, sometimes we'll read things in the Bible and think, but God, you know my special circumstance here. I mean, I, this is different. We, we can, but he said, don't deceive yourself like that. If you sow to the flesh, you reap corruption. If you sow to the spirit, you reap everlasting life. So what should we do? Sow to the spirit. He goes, let us not grow weary while doing good. You know, there we are. We're sowing to the spirit. We're doing good. We're practicing what the Bible says. For in due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. When, is due when does due season come? In due season, we'll reap if we do not lose heart. When is the due season? There may not be just one answer to that, but I mean, do what? You get the okay. You get the full, full growth. Okay. What do you say, Billy? Okay. You know, like, like Jimmy said, on the one hand, it's, it's that growing and maturing as a Christian. And, and we can reap in this life. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things we'll reap in this life. I mean, you think about our relationship to Jesus and the peace that passes understanding, the hope that's the anchor of our soul, the privilege of prayer and gathering together with our brethren, brothers and sisters in Christ. And there's so many, all spiritual blessings. But ultimately, it comes down to eternal life. I mean, we, 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 it's in due season, we may not reap everything today or tomorrow it may be many years down the road or it may be today or tomorrow but he said don't lose heart you know how long you know we understand if you go out and plant that garden it's going to take a while before you know the seeds have to sprout the plants have to grow you got to cultivate and then you know eventually if you're if you maintain it you know you're going to have hopefully you have a harvest not like mine that did not do too well and got cast into the fire but uh, hopefully you'll have a good harvest on things and um Okay. Okay. And I mean, you know, that's that's another thing too. If you, you know, if you, you you're trying to raise up your children in the right way, then if you see them grow up and mature and become what they should be. That's a, that's a harvest in a sense. You're studying with someone, you, you've worked on them, and they become a Christian, there's a harvest there. Does it always happen overnight? No, it takes a while. But, um, but don't grow weary while doing it. Keep on doing it. And again, it, it can be different things involved, and there's different types of harvest. If, if, you're, study, you know, if you're trying to set a right example before somebody, it may lead to a, you know, them asking, hey, let's study the Bible. Or you asking them, let's study the Bible, and you do. And that's good. But then, they eventually, they're, they're, they become a Christian. That's good for them. That's good for you. You appreciate that. But if you keep on doing those type of things, whatever it may be, that's doing good, eventually you will reap a home with God in heaven. And so, look, there, there's, a, there's a lot of different ways, a lot of different goods that come from it. The world does not grow weary in doing evil. I mean, you know, 24-7, the world is full of evil. But don't grow weary while doing good. Right. Yeah, and you can approach it in different ways. I was at the hospital the other day and was up on the sixth floor um, visiting Pat and Knotts, and that's a good little ride down by the time you wait for it. But there's a guy standing there with me, 
and he he had a red shirt on, bright red, and I was and I'm an Alabama fan. I go and his but his name tag was right over the logo, and I go so you're an Alabama fan. He goes no no no, <laughs> real, and it, he pulled it back and it was a YMCA thing or whatever. But he was making sure, he goes, my daughter graduated from Auburn. But you know, he goes, I like Alabama too. But anyway, um, we got, went from there to, by the time we walked across a parking lot together, I know that he's a member of the Church of Christ in Coleman, had been at a congregation in Huntsville, um, know about his family, and he knows about mine, you know. Um, which, I mean, but I mean, you know, it encouraged him. He encouraged me as a fellow Christian. And, and I mean, again, that's somebody that's already a Christian. But... Um, Anyway, you know, there's things that we have in common. I mean, we, we got to talk about different things, and there's a lot we have in common. And I think it lifted him up. I know it did me. Right. If we're looking for opportunities, they'll be there. I mean, they're, they're there. Sometimes we let it go, you know, or whatever. <laughs> they heard it anyway, right? No, but I mean, the thing is, don't grow weary. There's opportunities, and it may be a time, you know, a time that you can get into a deep study with somebody. Other times, you may can just plant a little bit of seed. Um, I, I usually try to mention to people, like if we're having a, any kind of little discussion like that, I let them know I'm a minister, and you, know, you say, where do you preach? And I'll say, what's well, the Liberty Church of Christ? You know where Hope Paul is. And um, some do, some don't, but I mean, bring in Church of Christ, or they're from somewhere else, I'll say, well, you know, when you, when you get back home, look up a Church of Christ in your area and, and go visit and, and, and learn. Right. 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 And that's another thing you can tell them. You can look up our, you know, show them how to get to our, our, our online thing as well. But, you know, I mean, there's opportunities, big and little. Don't grow weary while doing good. And, it, you know, it may be feeding, you know, feeding people that need food, um, helping, helping the poor and underprivileged. It, it can be mission trips. It can be all sorts of things. The cards, the, the phone calls, the visits. I mean, just don't be grow weary in doing good. You know, I appreciate our breakfast that we have. That's a, that's a good work. And um, I have experienced this myself. Somebody else said they did the same thing. Being around people that are talking amongst themselves that are not members of the church and, and saying, you know, Liberty, you know, that Liberty Church of Christ, they're doing some good things down there. And they they're, they're appreciate that. And it, it does change people's view. You know, uh, you know, looking at us as we're a caring group of people, and I think that's important. Uh, and you know, and then some of us gone into some religious discussions, and hopefully, you know, hope, you know, somebody said, well, they haven't come in here during the worship or Bible classes. Well, to give it time, but um, but still, we're we're not growing weary and doing good. There's a lot of different ways we can do that. Uh, and he says we will reap if we don't lose heart. It's easy to get discouraged, isms, to give up, to give in, uh, and if you just think, you know, if I just done just a little bit longer, you know, it, you know, or, you know, not giving up so soon. As we have opportunity, let us do good to all. Who does all include? Everybody. It doesn't leave anyone out. But it says especially to those who are the household of faith. We do good to everybody, but we better watch out for our brothers and sisters in Christ. I mean, we, we, we need to do good to them. You know, we can spend our time fighting each other, fussing at each other, uh, getting jealous or angry with each other, but you know, again, we stand for the truth, but we need to stand together for the truth. But he says, do good to your fellow brethren. And our congregation, I think, is good on reaching out to people that are hurting or have need. And, um, it's, and the sad thing is, you know, there's always an opportunity there. I mean, there's always that going on. There's somebody that has a loss or somebody is suffering or hurting. And, and we, we do encourage and try to help. But he says, it's all, all men, even those that aren't Christians. Reach out to them because they have needs as well. It, there's opportunities there. Like Jimmy said, look for the opportunities, and they're there um, in big ways and little ways. And so, you know, whatever you sow, you will reap. Other comments? Who does the sowing and who does the reaping? We're talking about sowing and reaping. Who, who sows and who I'm not asking you to name names, but in general, who sows and who reaps? We do? Okay, all of us? Okay. Um, again, you go back to this, be, you know, talking about sowing and reaping. He said, "Whatever a man sows," and I don't leave the women out. Just talking in general of mankind. I know that's not politically correct, but we understand what's being said there. He who sows is another one. He who sows, sows again, is mentioned several times. Let us not grow weary while doing good. We shall reap if we do not lose heart. As we have opportunity, let us do good. So I mean, it's us. It's we. It's me. 
it's you. Who sows and who reaps? We do. You know, we, we, we are all responsible for, in some shape, form, or fashion, sowing the seed. I mean, ultimately, the seed is the gospel, but there's different ways in which we can sow, and, and we'll do the reaping as well. So the good, bad side of that is if we're sowing the wrong thing, we're going to reap a harvest of, of bad things. Uh, we, we're so good, we'll reap the good. Uh, and by the way, well, the principle of sowing and reaping, you, you sow a certain amount, what do, you, what do you hope to get back? The same amount? You hope to get a lot more, don't you? You think about that one kernel of corn? I mean, one ear of corn has a lot more than that. Then you have several, a number of ears on the same corn stalk. Um, you know, the idea is you reap a lot more than you sow. You sow the wind. You reap the whirlwind, one of the prophets said. And hopefully we're not sowing the wind and reaping the whirlwind. Hopefully we're sowing the gospel and, and reaping benefits in our life and the life of others and ult ultimately eternal life. But you and I do the sowing and, and the reaping. Who makes the decision as to whether one walks in the spirit or walks in the lust of the flesh? The individual? Okay. Anyone disagree with that? Do what? Okay, you do? Yeah, I, I agree with you. Now, I'm just, the reason I say that is because some people look at it as beyond our control. I mean, either God chooses you and draws you to him or else he pushes you away and rejects you and, and you're lost no matter what. I mean, it's a misunderstanding of what the word foreordained and predestined in the scriptures mean. What God, what God foreordained and predestined was that salvation will be found in Christ. And it's those in Christ who will be saved. But we have a choice to make in our life. Either we will be in Christ, we decide to be in Christ and obey, you know, we obey the gospel, we're baptized into Christ, or else we make the choice not to. And so, you know, we have a choice to make. Am I going to walk in the spirit or am I going to walk in the lust of the flesh? You know what I said? The devil made me do it. Well, he might tempt you. He might work at you. But he, he can't over, he, you know, he can't make you do something totally against your will. It's you giving in to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. And so it, it's my decision or your decision. Galatians 5, 16, I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. You got a choice to make. Am I going to walk in the spirit or am I going to walk in the lust of the flesh? And I mean, if, if I walk in the spirit and I'm trying, you know, I'm, and we're going to talk about how that happens, um, it'll probably be next week at this point, but if I walk in the spirit, then I'm not going to give in to those fleshly desires. But if I'm walking in the lust of the flesh, I'm not going to give in to those proper spiritual desires that are there. They're contrary to one another. You know, some people try to have it both ways. You know, I think sometimes people look at it like it's kind of a balancing scale. And as long as here's bad, here's good, as long as they kind of balance, or maybe the good's a little bit higher, I'm okay. That's not what he says. Uh, which way are we walking? They're contrary. And if we're, if we're giving in to those wrong desires, the works of the flesh, the, fle the, the, the lust of the flesh, and he said, you'll do things you don't want to do. Because that's what, you, that's what you're following after. That's what you've chosen to do. Other thoughts? Two things we have. Okay. Okay.
really that's what Ecclesiastes is about. I mean, he's searching for purpose and meaning and fulfillment everywhere, except the one place. Okay. Okay, God, okay. So, but if your attitude is, God is right, I trust in him and obey him. What was your other point? Attitude and what else? And values, okay. Okay. So if we have the proper attitude, the proper values, that ties it. That's another way of tying in with this as well. Absolutely. And we'll see that more as we get into um, the lesson as well. Other thoughts? Our time is up. We will take up with lesson, I mean, see if it's question number four. And we will, I mean, if you'll go through and answer those questions, we will get on page three. A little bit more. But I appreciate your discussion. When we finish this one, Sunday I'll have some handouts. Well, we probably won't get to next week, but we'll start talking about love. will be the first one we'll look at. But I appreciate all the discussion tonight. What kind of attitude do we have? Are, are we really desiring to follow after God, to do his will? Or are we going like the world? Um, as the passage up on the screen says, see then that you walk circumspectly. Be careful that you walk carefully in your life. You know, walk wisely. A lot of people are just going this way, that way. They don't really think about it and don't consider the consequences at all, but we need to be careful in the way that we walk. You know, if, you are, you know, if you're walking um, through your yard, you might kind of watch around, you know, especially when the snakes are kind of moving around. Um, you know, you, you kind of watch out for snakes or you watch out for um, something you might step on that can hurt you. Um, we watch out for fire ant beds that when they pop up, you walk carefully, spiritually speaking, we walk carefully. Don't be like a fool, but be wise. Redeem the time. Uh, Brother Pew was talking about, you know, looking for opportunities, you know, in, in our life. We mentioned that in the Bible class. They're there. Make the most of your time to walk carefully. Why? Because the days are evil. I don't know that anyone would argue with that here. We understand there's a lot of evil out there in the world. Therefore, here, as a result of the fact that the world's full of evil and, and we've got to try to do the right thing, do not be unwise. Okay, well, so how can I not be unwise? In other words, how can I be wise? He says, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Not my will, but thine be done. Not my will, but God's will. Do you understand the will of God? If you're not a Christian, I hope you understand that God's will for you is that you become a child of God, that you have your sins washed away in the precious blood of Christ. He gave his son to die for you. Once you to give your life to him by becoming a Christian. As a child of God, do we understand what the will of the Lord is for us to walk in the light, to, to be faithful until death, to produce the fruit of the Spirit in our life, and, and to really live like we should? Are you walking circumspectly? Are you walking wisely? You might be here tonight and need to respond to the invitation. If you have any need at all, why don't you come while we stand and while we sing?